In the last video, we learned how to take a stratified and cluster and systematic sample of a different population. But we want to delve into the difference between a stratified and cluster sample a little bit more deeply, especially because students usually have a hard time with the difference between these two. Now, a stratified sample is when your population is divided into strata, into different layers, with members of the different layers having different characteristics, usually related to what you're trying to measure. And what you're going to do when you sample is get a little bit of each of those layers. So if you imagine a layer cake, it's when you cut down through a big wedding cake, a big layer cake, and you get some of every layer, like vanilla, strawberry, and chocolate layers, and you're going to get some of everything. It's like Neapolitan ice cream. Now cluster sampling is when you go in and the clusters are grouped onto geographical groupings usually, and you try to get everybody that it all the people that are in each of those clusters. So you choose a few clusters and you grab everybody. So I want to choose these three states or these three regions. Um, in, if you imagine your layer cake or in the Neapolitan example, it's when you go in and you dig out just the chocolate, which my family was notorious for doing. I never knew why we bought Neapolitan ice cream because we all wanted chocolate. So let's just buy chocolate. So if you imagine, for example, a hospital setting. So imagine a hospital with lots of different floors or lots of different um, units or wards. So stratified sampling is I'm going to select a few patients at random from each of the different units or each of the different floors. Cluster sampling is I'm going to take every patient, all the patients from this from these three units or all the patients from these three floors, four floors, it doesn't matter. So you pick a few or um, three, four, five clusters and you get all the patients. Stratified is you look at all the layers but you only get a few patients from each of those layers. That's the big difference between the two. Alright, so now that we know the difference between the two, oh, and before we move on, let's just double check ourselves. Don't forget convenient sample, which are the terrible ones. That's when you go um, ask people on the street, internet polls. Um, they're often self-selected. People are um, volunteering rather than being randomly chosen. So only people that care, only people that want to bother writing in, only people that want to call in the phone number, whatever, um, are selected for the convenient sample. It's terrible and it should be um, looked at with heavy skepticism when it pops up. Also don't forget about simple random sampling. Simple random sampling is when every um, possible sample of a certain size is just as likely to be drawn as any other. So we ba basically make a big list of all the people in the population and you have a computer or a, some way of randomly generating numbers and you randomly pull those numbers and call those people. Alright, so let's see what kind of sampling we've got going on here. In letter A, we have the Gallup organization plans to conduct a poll of New York City residents. Computers are used to randomly generate telephone numbers that are automatically called. Alright, so this is pretty obviously a simple random sample um, because we're probably only interested in the New York City residents for whatever reason. That's perfectly fine population and we're just going to randomly generate telephone numbers from that, um, those regions. Nowadays with um, number generation on computers, it can be a little bit trickier, but nevertheless, this is as close to simple random as we're going to get. Now, a marketing expert for MTV is planning a survey in which 500 people will be randomly selected from each age group, 10 to 19, 20 to 29, and so on. Well, that's a cluster sample, or excuse me, not a cluster, excuse me, that's a stratified sample, not a cluster sample, because you're getting a little bit from each of the groups, right? 500 people from each group. That's a random section of each of the groups, each of the layers, that's stratified for sure. All right, an ABC News um, reporter polls people as they pass them on the street. Oh, I love it when I see this. Um, I believe the late night talk show hosts are particularly good at this. Um, you got your Jimmy Fallon's and your um, Jimmy Kimmel's, etc. the Jimmy's, and um, Stephen Colbert, they'll poll people on the street and say, you know, do you even know who the president is? And they won't know. That is a convenient sample. It's pretty funny. Sorry, my dog is thwapping her ears in the background. I apologize. So um, convenient samples are often humorous for um, late night talk show hosts, but they're not so humorous if they're used to try to make important decisions. Next, a John Hopkins University researcher surveys all cardiac patients in each of 30 randomly selected hospitals. 
because they're selecting all of the cardiac patients, that's key right there, all. Because of that, it's going to have to be a cluster sample. Highlight that for you. So this is E, rather obviously, because it's all of the cardiac patients in each of the hospitals. So since you're choosing cardiac patients in each of 30 randomly selected hospitals, because it's all of them, it's a cluster sample. If you randomly got some cardiac patients and some ICU patients and some, you know, I don't know, uh, mothers giving birth patients, I don't know what those are called, OBGYN patients from each of the hospitals, that would be more a stratified sample. But by selecting all the cardiac patients, that's what makes it a cluster. A United States custom agent pulls over and inspects every 125th car that passes through the Detroit Windsor Tunnel. That is systematic. Um, it often shows up in TV shows, you know, you're the 1,000th customer and it's invariably when the uh, protagonist of the series doesn't want to be noticed at the grocery store is invariably when they win the prize for being at the grocery store. I believe there was a Brady Bunch episode back in the day that had the same thing happen. So every 125th car that passes, you win a prize, right, of getting pulled over and inspected. Congratulations. That's a systematic sample. A general motor, um, oh, by the way, just on a side note, I actually had this happen to me when I went to Mexico one time. Um, we were going through the customs line and it had a little red um, red light, green light, and so it went and they had a clicker, and so they would click and every, and I had, I don't know how many it was, but I didn't, I was not selected, but every so many th pa um, passenger coming off the plane was pulled over and inspected by Mexican customs. So. A General Motors researcher has partitioned all registered cars into categories some compact, compact, midsize, intermediate, and full size. Um, she's surveying 200 randomly selected cars from each category. That is stratified again because you're selecting a random group from each of the categories. Very much stratified. A college in Newport's student, oh, excuse me, the College of Newport conducts a study of student drinking by randomly selecting 10 different classes and interviewing all the students. There's that word again, all. That is going to be a cluster sample because it's all the students in those classes. If they get a few students from every class, that's stratified. If they get all the students from a few classes, that's cluster. Um, American Idol chooses its winner based on opinions. That is convenience, my friends. And it's okay. I mean, nobody minds it for American Idol or for, you know, the voice or whatever. But it's not the kind of thing you want to make decisions about how much funding your hospital gets on based on.